we'll talk about our new ME200. It's our second camera in our multi-purpose system. It's a little four and a half inch cube box that can kind of be configured for a bunch of different types of shooting. Uh, that's why we call it the multi-purpose uh, camera. So we have it in a few different configurations at the show. Um, right here you're seeing it on a PTZ mount, uh, which is a remote control pan and tilt head. But we also have it uh, with a B4 mount because um, there's a lot of mounts that are made by third party people where you can put B4 mount lenses that will cover two thirds inch sensors to cover this. And we have a power port for the front uh, for like powered servo lenses. So if you're going to do more of an ENG style on it, um, you can actually put these lenses that are out in the world right now. So it's the little brother to our ME20, which has a very large sensor in it. It's really good in low light. It's kind of the, everyone's talking about the 4 million ISO on it. Uh, this is kind of the second camera and it's got a super 35 size sensor. It's basically the exact sensor from our C100 Mark II. And we put it in this body style because then you get dual pixel autofocus you get um, a smaller sensor that can kind of cover our Super 35 lenses. It goes up to about 204,000 on the ISO, so it's still really good in low light. It comes standard with our Cinema Lock mount, which is an EF, but it, the base spins similar to the way a PL mount would. So it's a really strong mount, but it's still Canon's lenses. So if you have any of our still lenses or our Cinema lenses, um, all of them will go on this. And because the sensor is smaller, most of our lenses will actually cover that size sensor. So there's two SDI outputs. Uh, the top one has the camera info on it, and the bottom one is clean, so that's usually your record. That's the one you'd use to actually record the video. So the idea is maybe using an EVF or something that's not doing the recording, but you still need because that's how you control the camera. So usually we have some sort of EVF coming out of the top port, and that's how you can see the info and control it. And then coming out of the second SDI is where I'll put my recorder. But a lot of times we get people who are using their recorder as their onboard monitor. So as you're shooting, you'll be able to just turn that info on and off. And what's really cool is we're actually gonna have a firmware update very soon, so where you hit record, the actual info will turn off. And then we have an HDMI output. It's basically just an uncompressed 10-bit signal. You can do log, you can do our YDR, you can do our EO standard. And then it's kind of on the uh, end of the recorder. So you know, if you use an Atomos, you get ProRes, you get um, DNxHR, so you've got Avid and you've got Apple uh, kind of covered in that. If you use Odyssey 7Q, you can do different versions of ProRes and things like that. So it's really um, just an uncompressed signal. It's not raw, it's just not doing anything. It's just giving you the image right off the sensor. So there's buttons on the camera if you want to operate it yourself, uh, if you want to make the controls. Uh, obviously, you can use our RCV100 um, to do the controlling, but if you're just a single operator, you'll, uh, you know, you'll have it rigged on your shoulder with some kind of shoulder mount, some kind of recorder, and then you actually can toggle through with a joystick on the actual camera. It has a little mini mic jack, so it's just like a DSLR. You could put a small mic on top of it, um, but you are gonna probably wanna do a dual system situation so you can actually monitor it um, and make sure that the audio is going in well. So we have a standard four pin XLR power on the camera. So it's kind of an industry standard. A lot of people use it. So you'll just wanna get some sort of adapter to like a P-TAP so then you can go to like Anton Bauer batteries or V-Lock or something like that. So uh, you'll need some sort of external power. Again, it's just this lens box. It's a, a box with a sensor and outputs on it. So all you're getting is the body. So you'll need a recorder, you'll need a peripheral stuff to make it work. But that's what's so interesting about it. When you're buying the camera, you're not just buying one product. You're buying something that can be used in many different types of applications. And that's really the whole point of be having this multi-purpose camera um, series. We're not really sure when we're shipping, but definitely at some point before the end of the year. It'll be 5999 so just under 6000